Hey internet, Harris here. So last year I made a video talking about how I use my iPad Pro for school. Uh, that was the 9.7 inch original iPad Pro with the Apple Pencil. A lot has changed, two generations of iPads have changed, but in this video I wanna share my experience with the new iPad Pro 11 inch with the new Apple Pencil, how my note taking experience works at Boston College. I'm also making a video about how I use the iPad Pro in general for school, not just notes on the iDownload blog channel. So if you're interested in that, Make sure to go check that out. I'll leave a link in the description. And this video is made possible by Paperlike, a company that takes the glossy fingerprint covered iPads display, puts a matte screen protector on it, and makes it feel a lot more like you're writing on paper with your Apple Pencil. If you wanna check out Paperlike, I'll leave a link in the description. Okay, so in last year's video talking about taking notes, I was using GoodNotes for the iPad, and I really, really liked it. The biggest things I had were the fact that copy and paste was a little bit wonky, you couldn't rotate things, I just had a couple other nitpicks. This year, I switched over to Notability because a lot of people recommended it, I wanted to give it a shot, and I've been using that for this year. I've got a folder set up for each class that I'm using this in. Currently, a couple of my classes don't let me use my iPad, so the classes that I have would be Spanish, computer science, and then calculus. And I use this all the time in those classes, especially in calculus. I actually made a full video talking about the differences between good notes and notability uh, on the iPad. If you want to take a look at that video, I will leave it linked in the description. I think I do like good notes better, but I'm in notability for this year. It's not a big difference. They're pretty similar. So notability, when I go in, I create a new document or I continue working in a previous one if it's the same, the same topic or the same unit and I just go to work with the Apple Pencil. Uh, the Apple Pencil is extremely precise and I did a review of the Apple Pencil if you're interested in seeing what it is all about. Again, I'll leave that link in the description. Basically, it's super precise. The new matte texture on it feels super comfortable. It's always with you because it magnetically attaches to your iPad. <laughs> magnetically attaches to your iPad. It's always charged. If you leave this away from the iPad, it'll go into low power mode. So it's basically never dead. Um, and it's just an awesome tool for using with your iPad. It does come out of the cost though. It's pretty expensive, but if you use this with the iPad Pro, it is just an awesome note-taking experience. And now this year, this competes a little bit more with something like the Surface Pen because the double tap on the side of it switches between the pen um, and the erase tool, or you can have it switch to your last used tool. Uh, and that's really handy because now you can quickly go back and erase things just by double tapping as you're going and it works really well. So what's really cool about this is that I can actually download documents or lectures or whatever I need to um, if my professor posts that and then I can open that, I can share it and open it up in Notability. And when I do that, I can annotate on it, I can export it. I do my weekly homework assignments on here and export it and then print it from my computer. That all works super well. It's incredibly precise, like it feels great. And if you use something like the paper like screen protector, it does feel for the most part like you're writing a bit like on paper and the display being this big, the iPad Pro 11 doesn't change the way I take notes, but it makes it so much more enjoyable. If you use the 12.9 inch iPad, that is almost the same size as a sheet of paper is what Apple said. But even this 11 inch, it's just the, it's really, really nice being able to have just all that screen when you are writing rather than a lot of bezel and a lot of screen. This is pretty much all screen and it's awesome for taking notes. Now there's definitely something to taking notes on paper and pen. Um, it's really satisfying to write with your favorite pen and paper, you do retain it a little bit better, but this has so many tools. You can add shapes, you can add graphs, make perfectly straight lines in your graphs. You can add images. On Notability, I can add recordings to my lectures. So if I'm taking notes, I can also be recording my professor's lecture and then I can play it back and it will redo my handwriting as I go. That's something that you just really can't accomplish uh, via paper and pencil. So that's one of the big advantages of using something like this setup on the go. Not to mention, I'm really a fan of both good notes and notability. Uh, so either way you go, you're gonna get a really good experience. It's easy to organize, it recognizes handwriting so you can search through your notes and that's something that you can't do with paper and pencil. Now, of course, you also have the advantage of not needing multiple binders or notebooks. You have everything on your iPad, which includes all of your other apps, your email, your things like that. It's such a thin and light body. You don't have to worry about ripping out pages. You don't have to worry about you know cluttered notebooks, anything like that. You have everything on here um, and you get to save some paper too. I understand it's not a complete trade-off because this isn't exactly the most environmentally friendly thing, but you're saving tons and tons of paper if you don't have to print things, if you don't have to get handouts, you can just download things to your iPad. You can submit things to teachers via email by exporting the document that you are working on. Now what's also cool about this is say you have a quiz in a class 
um, and it's an open note quiz. So you can use your notes. What you can do is what I did in high school. I don't really do it in college anymore, uh, but what you can do in high school, you can go ahead and use the accessibility mode and your teacher can set in a password and this will prevent you from being able to leave the document. And that way your teacher can ensure that you cannot leave the application. You cannot access any other notes. So you can use this for in-class um, exams or things like that. If you're allowed to bring notes to it, your teacher can set a password and verify that you aren't leaving the document. The one thing I talked about last year is if you ever had to share your document with somebody in class, you know, rip it out and give it to somebody else. Uh, Mrs. Cox had me do that in calculus a few times. Uh, that's something that gets a little bit harder. You have to give somebody your physical iPad, which is a little bit risky, um, but that's basically the one trade-off. And if that's not something that you really perceive happening, then you don't really have to worry about that, obviously. So at the end of the day, the iPad Pro 11 doesn't fundamentally change the way I take notes, but it makes it much more convenient. I don't have to worry about losing this. I definitely don't have to worry about charging it. Um, and this screen is just so awesome for taking notes. The 120 hertz refresh rate versus the 60 hertz on the iPad Pro 9.7, I can't say I noticed it really that much. I don't think it's that big of a deal. For you it might be, basically just means that things refresh a little bit faster. But this is a very expensive but very awesome note taking machine. I absolutely love it. I would recommend it, um, just as I would recommend checking out a paper like screen protector, again linked in the description. Let me know what you think about this combo. I recognize it's very pricey, uh, but if you're looking for it for the holiday season, it's not a bad one at all. And I will leave links to this iPad and Apple Pencil down in the description. I believe b &H Photo, you can save sales tax depending on where you live, but I'll leave a few links down in the description. Comment any questions or concerns you have and I will try to get back to you as soon as possible. But thank you for watching this video and I will catch you in the next one.